Don Omega here with Omega Boxing, OmegaBoxing.com here with uh, Jason Litzow. How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling great. I'm ready to rumble. I hear you. I hear you. Looking ready for the American boy to come back to Minnesota? I'm, I'm ready. Man. I'm happy to be home. This is beautiful. Now, what do you know about your opponent? I don't know much. I just know he's 10 pounds overweight. Yeah that, me. yeah, that was ridiculous. His opponent tonight came in 141 pounds, I believe, 141 and a half pounds, something like that. I mean, I, I just, for who I am, I'm a, I'm a warrior. As all my fans know, we're going to have to fight regardless he's 10 pounds over or not. I'm going to still have to fight him because I'm not going to not fight. If it's fight or no fight, I'm going to fight because I want to give my fans what they want. And that's a knockout. I'm going to still beat him. And that's a that's a true warrior right there, Jason Litzel. Now, where are you campaigning at now? Where is, what's the weight you want to campaign at right oh, now? I'm going to make 126 easier than ever. I've had five opponents in the last week, so I just fought at 131. But uh, there's no reason to make 126 unless it's for a world championship, but I can make it easy. Um, is there anyone in particular you want to fight at 126 right yeah, now? I, I want all of them, all the champions. And I would even fight Robert Grubb at 130. I, honestly... He pussed out over that cut on his eye. You guys seen it? He cut me with a headbutt in the first round. And then he pussed out on his fight. That ain't a champion. That's not a champion, as you guys know. Yeah, and yeah, we saw we saw the first Guerrero fight, and um, you would like to avenge that. Is that something you'd say is probably your number one thing, or do you, or what would you say is your number one ad- objective? My number one thing is what anybody, what, whatever the promoters make happen, but... Uh, I want to get a world championship, bring it home to Minnesota. I hear that. Well, we appreciate your time, and uh, good luck tomorrow night. We know, we know you'll give us a good show. a Bots and Vents, Don Omega, OmegaBotsing.com, here with Anjo- Antonio Johnson. Who are you here supporting? Uh, you know, I'm just here supporting uh, Minnesota boxing just in general. Uh, but uh, my two best friends, uh, Jason and Alan, they're going to come back on this card, and it should be exciting. A uh, card full of fireworks with Vanda and Tucker on the card as well. and. And some of the undercards are awesome, too. Sirius Hill Fort's definitely someone you want to watch. So it's going to be good. So what do you have going on right now? When, when do you plan to be fighting again? Um, I just got done fighting uh, March 27th. Uh, I suffered my first uh, defeat. Uh, I, I really feel like I got robbed in that one uh, under decision uh, against Francisco Santana, 9-1. Uh, and one. Uh, so now I'm seven one and one. Uh, I just been had some tough decisions, but I should be fighting back in St. Paul uh, or in the Twin Cities uh, June fifth, hopefully on this next show out here. June fifth with uh, Justin Sauer and everything. Um, can you re- rephrase that? I'm sorry. Uh, June fifth on this on this whole thing, this new happens, Target Center. Uh, yeah, the whole new Target uh, Center's uh, series. I hope that everything goes well with that, and and I believe that this is going to be a good start right here. This. This event right here. Well, we appreciate your time and uh, thank you too. See you tomorrow night. Have a good time. Enjoy the fights. Thank you. Don Omega here with OmegaBoxing.com. Here with Phil the Drill Williams. Uh, We understand you're pretty upset about the weigh-in. Tell us what's on your mind. Yeah, real frustrated, man. We went all the way through camp, you know, getting ready for this fight or whatnot. I was fighting a guy named Reggie Concrete Lacrete from Brooklyn, so I'm getting ready for him six weeks. So they tell me last week he broke his jaw in practice, so he wasn't gonna fight. And on my way here, my in-town rival, Jungle Boy, when I'm here, moved down and weight to super middleweight after 10 years. So then I come to, my, to, the, to the weigh-ins for the fights. The fighter that bring him in is weighing in with all his clothes on, and he's 10 pounds less than I am right now. With all his clothes on, my clothes are off. I'm not going to take the fight. I'm not going to accept it. It's not good for my fans. It's not going to work, and we're not going to accept it. Okay, so so you're, you've decided as of right now you're not going to fight? Yeah, it's over. We're not going to do it. It's, it's a disappointment to my fans and everything. They want to see me fight people. They don't want to see people coming as opponents or they try to bring his opponent. Not saying he's just an opponent or whatnot. He's a fighter, but one and one and 10 pounds underweight, it's not going to work for me. I punch too hard. I'm, I'm a real fighter. I'm a real professional, and I'm trying to, and I'm trying to <coughs> help Minnesota with this professional fighting thing going on because we're, we're going to stop accepting these, these, these fights. If we don't want them, don't accept them. That's that's true. Better fights. Yeah. That's true. This is um like you said, a guy that's one and one and yeah. uh, ten pounds underweight with his clothes on, so he's probably much less than that. Yep. And um, so that that that's sort of a rare thing, though, that a fighter would actually say, "No, this guy's too small." Yeah. That's something you don't see, and I think that speaks highly of you. Exactly, because I'm trying to uphold a a, a better standard, man. We're trying to. If I'm saying I'm gonna elevate boxing here, I got I got to start by making my making my step first. Now, I heard you say something whenever you were um, upset. You said, "I'm a professional, not a club fighter." Exactly, and what I've been seeing a lot, they've been trying to do a lot of putting a lot of club fights together. 
calling people five days before the fight and, or putting cage fighters in with boxers, that, that's not going to help us with boxing. And then, then we got fans coming here and they're, they're supporting us and sticking with us as much as they are. We can't. I'm not going to give them that. I'm not going to, especially out of me. And I have, a, I have a, I have a fan base that sticks with me no matter what. So I'm not going to give them that. They want to see us fight real people, so we're going to fight real people. We're going to call them out, and we're not only going to accept those fights. So that's it. The people at my side are big, uh, big boxing fans too, so they will really respect that. Um, the people that watch my site, my site's a small site, so uh, they're niche hardcore boxing fans, so they're going to really appreciate that. And um, it's it's disappointing not to get to see the drill in action, but. Uh, do you I'm still, I'm, we're still ready. If they can go get Jungle Boy, if he's still ready to fight, I'll go fight him right now. But they ain't going to do that. But that's what I'm coming for. But Marcus Oliveira Williams, too. You know, that's, where, that's the first person who beat me is Marcus Oliveira. If we can get that rematch, we'll take that. We want to fight him, Jadon Codrington. I mean, the strength of schedule, the people we want to fight, is, is way different to the like comparison when they just try to bring in. We're not accepting that. And drill fans, we want more. Jadon Codrington. There is a big, exciting name right there. Trying to get him for June 5th. Yeah. June 5th, okay. Back here at June 5th? Wherever they want to bring it. We can go outside the game, so I don't care where we go. I'm going to be ready. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm excited, man. We really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Fill the What's drill. What's your name again? It's Don Omega. Got you. Fill the drill, my man. Don Omega here, OmegaBoxing.com, here with Wilton Hilario. Uh, you're inviting Alan Z Litz out tomorrow night. Tell me your thoughts. Uh, it's going to be a great fight. I really believe he's 100%. I'm 100%, and, and it's going to be a hell of a fight. It seemed there were some words there between you and Alan at this weigh-in. Want to mention anything on that? Yeah, no, I mean, okay, I'm from, originally you know, from Minneapolis. He's from St. Paul. I'm undefeated. He's not. And he wants to come out last. There's something that don't make any sense to me. And we already talked about that I'm coming last. But now, for any reason, I don't know, they want to come out last. <laughs> you will be the last man standing regardless, though, at yeah, I mean, but you know, just I can't. I just, yeah, it just, it don't make no sense. I, I be, I been laid down. Everything they say, I'll do it. Anything, everything they tell me to do, I, I'll do it. But I can't let stuff like this happen. I can't. It's not fair. It's not fair for for anybody. I, I fully agree. If you were, if you were the man that was supposed to come out last, it's just a, um, sort of a disrespect. Yeah, and I feel that's what I feel. I feel disrespected just by even they telling me that that he wants to come out last. I mean, what? Who are you? You from St. Paul? I'm from the cities. I'm a hometown fighter. So that's how it is. If it would have been St. Paul, I would have had no problem. You from down there? We fighting on your hometown. You call me last. There's no problem with that. But we we fighting on my hometown. That's what I'm coming out coming out last. Well, Wilton, we wish you luck tomorrow night. Okay. Uh, All right, thank you very much. Thank you, and everybody out there, keep watching. And tomorrow's gonna be a hell of a fight. No, don't miss it, and it's gonna be good. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much.